Hi everyone, I'm Dave Klingas of the University of Florida, and I'm happy to be telling you today about our work recently published in the American Naturalist, exploring the roles of micro and macro geography in driving climate patterns. I want to first note that I'm speaking from Gainesville, Florida, built on the traditional lands of the Seminole and Timucua peoples, and also provide a quick acknowledgement to Dr. Brett Sheffers, as well as the many contributors who provided data to our database. Due to limited time, I won't be able to detail the tropical case studies that we provide in the paper, but we'll focus more on the tropical temperate latitude comparison. One such latitudinal comparison that you may be familiar with was drawn by Dan Jansen in his seminal 1967 paper. Jansen combined temperature data from the tops and bottoms of several mountains in Costa Rica in the United States and found that thermal regimes at high and low elevations on temperate mountains heavily overlapped. In contrast, thermal overlap on tropical mountains was much lower due to the thermal aseasonality of the region. A smaller amount of thermal overlap, such as in the tropics, may lead to harder dispersal across mountains. In our work, we wanted to question why all attention is paid to the latitudinal gradient. There are so many local drivers of temperature. How important are they relative to latitude in determining the change in temperature across a mountain slope? To explore this, we synthesized thermal data from 29 mountain ranges globally, compiling empirical thermal time series from high and low elevations, in total representing 524 sampling years. And because we were using data from in-situ thermal loggers, as opposed to sources such as satellite imagery for our temperature estimates, we were able to have reliable samples of ecologically relevant temperature, such as within forests or under snow. So we were able to measure altitudinal thermal overlap separately for three vertically oriented microhabitats within soil, at or above the surface, and for forests within the canopy. For all mountains in this database, we measured thermal overlap using three distinct metrics, which quantify the similarity in thermal regimes at high and low elevations of a mountain on a monthly time step. And using collection of in situ and remotely sensed observations, we characterized the macro, meso, and microscale conditions of each elevational site on each mountain. The latitude of the mountain, the difference in elevation between the high and low sites monitored, as well as the amount of vegetation and snow on that mountain, and the height or depth at which the thermal loggers were placed at both high and low elevations. We then constructed a series of linear mixed effects models and through multi-model inference, we derived coefficient estimates which are displayed here. The height of a mountain was the strongest predictor of thermal overlap. And this makes sense. The taller the mountain is, the more temperature changes from bottom to top. But past this, we found that vegetation structure and average snow depth decreased thermal overlap, and increasing vertical microhabitat in which temperature was monitored increased thermal overlap. All of these meso and micro predictors were more important than latitude, for which the coefficient estimate did not deviate from zero. Collectively, this points towards meso and micro scale geographic factors playing larger roles in driving thermal regimes than the macro gradient of latitude. Our global synthesis suggests that a species microhabitat may have a profound effect on its dispersal capacity, perhaps best evidenced by the vertical forest thermal gradient. Higher thermal overlap between forest canopies at low and high elevation, as we found, suggests that non-volant arboreal species may find it much easier to cross mountains than fossorial species, which would be predicted to have narrow thermal niches corresponding to low thermal variability below ground. So our study leads us to predict that vertical position of a species within a habitat will influence its ecophysiology. And there's recent empirical evidence suggesting such. For instance, see Lily Leahy's presentation from an earlier session today. Latitude's not to be discounted as an important driver of biogeographical patterns, but it may be a relatively weak predictor of dispersal patterns relative to more local processes. We instead propose a nested basis for the climate variability hypothesis, which not only includes latitude and altitude, but also vertitude. Consideration of all of these gradients may therefore harmonize some of the discordant findings of thermal performance and tolerance across latitude. Thanks.